All right, welcome back to Just Car Guys, the show where me and my dad talk about the latest and greatest car news and car stories from the last week. And as a quick reminder, I haven't seen any of the content that Anthony has put together for us today, so looking forward to seeing what you got this week. Got some interesting stuff, that's cool. for sure. First up here, after making 51,738 cars across 26 years, Lotus is making a major switch. Production has officially ended for the Lotus Elise, Exige, and Evora. The switch comes from a choice to move toward an electric future with vehicles like the Avisia Hypercar. The last internal combustion vehicle we will see from Lotus is the incredible Amira powered by a familiar Toyota 3.5 liter V6. That Amira or, is awesome. Oh, it's awesome. <laughs> it looks so cool. Or an AMG 2 liter four cylinder. The new production schedule goes roughly like this. So we'll get the Amira mid-engine gas powered sports car, the Avisia electric hypercar, the Type 132 SUV, Type 133 four-door coupe, Type 134 crossover, and Type 135 electric sports car. Okay. Pretty crazy. Yeah, that's wild. They're going kind of from... They're, it sounds like they're definitely trying to become a little more mainstream with yep. bringing in like SUV and a crossover and stuff like that. I'm very intrigued to see what a traditional... Like they are as much of a sports car brand. Like, I mean, they that's them completely so i i'm not sure how they'll translate over into yeah. uh, uh mainstream especially because you know the people kind of put up with some of the uh unreliability you know yeah. some of the as uh um one of my favorite say quirks and features yeah, exactly. uh <laughs> go doug um no but seriously like for for some folks you know, it, it's all part of that experience. Yeah. But you start getting into mainstream and people have certain expectations, exactly. right? So, so you have to start acting like a big manufacturer. Yeah, it will be, it'll be interesting. I Very hope they don't lose their spirit, right? Because oh, 100%. Because that, it's, it's, uh, it's in the veins. It runs through, you know. Like when you hear Lotus, you don't, you think of like it, it's, the it's F1 all cars and like cars. all yeah. it, their racing heritage. It's pretty crazy. Very, I'm it's excited. gonna be really interesting yeah. to watch. That's yeah. for sure. Ford is involved in yet another recall. Ford is recalling 2021 to 2022 Ford F-150 pickups over potential Ooh. drive shaft damage. Drive this shaft. affects a total of 184,698 trucks, with the root of the problem being two underbody acoustic and thermal insulators. These could loosen and come in contact with the aluminum drive shaft and damage or fracture it. Ford estimates that only 10% of the recall trucks will actually have the defect. Hmm. Okay. And a lot of recalls. That, that yeah. Clear, that's for sure. Yeah. I, I, I'd like to know. I know what the production issues that they've had and things like that. I, you know, is 184,000. Is that they, they feel like a fraction of those will actually be impacted. Yeah, you know, how many, how many did they make? I think they during make the like time frame, right? Thousand F series pickups. Yeah, I know, right? Year. So like it, that's a, a small portion of that. And then they're thinking a small portion of that. So pretty much is like, you know, some dude just didn't tighten up the, and they, they had to yeah, let him go. That one right? guy. On yeah, it's the one guy. Yeah, that, it's that every every truck he touched. Yeah, he, yeah. They're, all everything else He's is like, fine. Oh, you're supposed to put a lock nut on. Right. That? It's it's <laughs> it's totally based on that. It is not like a design flaw. Oh no. Nah. Somebody just screwed up when yeah. they were putting it together. Huh. Okay. Pretty crazy though. Wow. A few months ago, we got our first look at the 2022 Honda Civic Type R. Yeah. Honda released these teaser images to showcase what the new Type R prototype looks like. As of a recent update from Honda, they announced they will display the next gen Civic Type R prototype at the Tokyo Auto Salon in mid-January. Yeah. They will also show a never before seen video of the vehicle undergoing development, it's rumored to be driving around a racetrack. Pretty cool. I that, honestly that I, looks that looks awesome. I you know, really like it. The first thing that comes over my mind is WRX. Like, I don't know. Just like, look out. Yeah, you yeah, know, exactly. like like hey, uh, we're, watch we're out for that. One. Look over your shoulder. Yeah, you know, exactly. we're coming. It, that that is, I don't know. It's, that looks yeah, good to me. It's pretty cool. Even even in the camo, you know, I don't you, know if you can I've tell. Ever, necessarily actually like i've never really hated one but i've never really liked a civic type r i think this is really cool looking yeah i'm very excited to see what the actual debut will end up looking like 
cost. Should be fun. You now have the chance to purchase an ultra rare variant of what is considered one of the best sounding cars of all time. A one of 50 Lexus LFA high performance Nürburgring package has shown up for sale. With BBS magnesium wheels, a fixed rear wing, retuned suspension, stickier tires, big front splitter, dive planes, and a retuned six speed six six speed single clutch automatic transmission for faster shift times all accompanying the 4.8 liter v10 engine producing 562 horsepower with an official nurburgring time of 7 minutes and 14 seconds back in 2011 which was a record at the time and with just 12,000 miles on this example, it is for sale in the UK for 849,950 pounds, roughly 1.3 million US dollars. Wow. You're right. I mean, that that thing is flat out, I, I would say, top five best sounding cars. Oh, it sounds so From good. the manufacturer ever made. It's, it's period. insane. Yeah, very, very cool. There's not much that tops it, really, besides maybe... You know, you got a Ferrari V12. You got to throw in the options. Carrera GT. Exactly. You know, but, but man, yeah, that's so good. Yeah. I love the interior on this thing, too. You, all the carbon well, you like fiber all the, and, stuff. and the Alcantara is like, yeah, it's like everywhere. It's so cool. Which, quite frankly, like, it does look pretty cool that way. And, you know, the reality is that stuff, while it looks good, it doesn't wear well, right? Yeah. But, but if you put it in areas that are low touch, it's going to mm -hmm. look good for years. You know? Oh, yeah. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. That's awesome. One of Acura's new EV SUVs may feature the ADX name. Due to recent trademark filings from Honda, it is believed the upcoming GM-built electric Acura may feature the ADX name, but this could also just be for another gas-powered SUV or Honda trying to prevent other manufacturers from taking it. Acura's forthcoming SUV is to be built by General Motors, likely sharing platform, powertrain, and battery packs with other GM EVs. So that is just an interesting choice that I thought of. Like, you think? Yeah. They're going to partner with GM. I mean, that's just doesn't seem like Acura to do something like that. Have they done that before? They may have. I don't know off the top of my head, but um, I don't know. The, the, everybody's scrambling right now to, to try and, you know, one up each other on yeah. the technology. But sometimes it's better to, to partner. Get in first. You know, yeah. and then some people work on one aspect of the design and others work on the other. And yep. then they, they combine forces and come up with something pretty, pretty wonderful. So 100%. Certainly uh, promising. Can I just say this is an awesome picture too? Yeah, it is. I found this. I was like, I have to use that. It looks so cool with the Type S hill climb car on the back of that thing. Official vehicle, the Pikes Peak. Yep. Hundred, 100th running coming up. I'm so excited. Six months. That. We're gonna go. I'll have plenty of footage to show you guys from that one. We'll do a special Pikes Peak episode. It's pretty awesome. That's good. Now, from Acura, we go to General Motors, who have also had some recent patent filings that indicate its future models. GM recently filed a trademark Buick Electra with the U.S. Trademark and Patent Office. The Electra nameplate was abandoned after the 1990 model year, but was recently featured on an electric concept SUV. The vehicles would, of course, be expected to be powered by one of GM's Ultium, Ultium platforms, sharing parts and hardware with other GM EVs. That and of course, just like Honda, there's a chance this could be used for a new gas-powered vehicle or just not be used at all. But many are hedging their bets on it being the name for a new EV. Well, it makes I mean, sense. Dupre Electra, yeah. like the Ford Lightning, yep. Buick Electra, it just makes sense. I feel totally. like you have to yeah. do that. Yeah, and I think that's a good one. Yeah, that's I agree. Good I think it is good. How about the design worker? Uh, it's, it is interesting. I mm -hmm. <laughs> it is on, designed. Man. That's extreme. Coming I from, hate it. Yeah. I think it's ugly. Yeah. I personally hate concept cars. I'm just going to put that out there. Like, prototypes are all right. Like, that Civic Type R, it looks like a real vehicle. Right. Yeah. Concept car, they're just too extreme in most circumstances. Think, yeah. That looks terrible. Yeah. I I like them because they give you the opportunity to see what's in the de designer's heads. Like, but if you the cut them totally loose, weird, and then what would, what would, you know, how are they going to take that and mold it into make something they could make actually make every day, you know, yeah. and that, that people would buy? Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. I prefer to just see prototypes other yeah. than concepts because yeah. we'll never see that. Like, it's right. going to be completely different. And that's, but no maybe, point. you know, maybe that 
rear door hinge will show up somewhere, you know? Or <laughs> yeah, well, sweet. <laughs> Step here, we already spoke a little bit about this, but the Tokyo Auto Salon in 2022 is planning to be held as a live event after being only virtual last year. We already know about the Honda Civic Type R debut, but what? But we should also be seeing Subaru's all-electric STI E-RA concept. <laughs> this performance vehicle aims itself at carbon neutral motorsports with E standing for electrification and RA for record attempt. Okay. Is, that's pretty cool. Subaru will also showcase the new Levorg STI and WRX S4 STI concept showing off new performance parts created for the models. That's they they do a lot of those like special limited edition they've got a ton of limited edition cool. wrx's and so with that then we go to a brand that you never hear about here because we don't have it unfortunately but these are kind of cool daihatsu will bring two modified k cars <laughs> with the check out the camper with the man right I don't know, a tri deck camper and the a tri premium van which those things they're just cool I'm telling you. Like, that, that's awesome. That They could probably do something with that in the U.S. They really you know? could. I guarantee you sell that thing in the U.S. golden. Especially here, you know, it's been the past couple of years that, uh, you know, camping and mm -hmm. that type of thing has kind of taken off. Oh, yeah. Especially with the smaller sized campers and, and things are, like that. I mean, so Those off-road vans, like the, what's the yep. Mitsubishi? Uh, Starts with a D, I think. The Delia. Some, I don't know about the Mitsubishi. Delica? Okay. Yeah, there people are importing tons of like those old like off-road vans with scoops. Oh, on. I know which one yeah. you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're yeah. awesome. Sort of like the Vanagons and yeah. and those. Yeah, which by the way, Volkswagen's kicking around bringing back, right? Yeah, the ID which, Buzz. Right. So, I don't know. I think <laughs> that cool. I think that's an untapped market that you know people could totally. really take off with. That's why they're selling the heck out of those like Mercedes Benz. Yeah, uh, you vans, drive by a Mercedes dealership, that's yep. like all they have. It's like a bunch of they have just a those, line of Sprinter vans. Yep. And some of them already have like off-road tires on them and yep. stuff like from factory. It's so cool. Now, the, here's a company you may have heard of before, Veilside. Famous for their RX-7 kit used in the Fast and Furious movies, mm, especially yeah. Tokyo Drift. Plan to bring a Veilside Toyota Supra with tons of exterior modifications as expected. It's pretty extreme looking. Those are some like teaser images of uh, what they plan to bring there in production. But man, that uh, something else. It could be cool. Yes, exactly. I'd like cool. to see it finished. Uh, yeah, with I need paint to see it finished. Right now, it does. It totally looks like a kit. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. I like I like it when they they mold it like they did for the the movie car right like yeah. you mold it into something that could well, almost be they, factory like, right the entire thing yeah. the Veil side RX seven like FD kit they the whole thing is different it's right. pretty cool but that's uh, that's promising though it looks oh yeah hundred cool. percent I I'm just I'm excited to see it when it's actually all set yeah. and done painted got its carbon fiber bits on it you know all that stuff last but not least is Mitsubishi bringing two con two new concept vehicles one being an all-electric k car and a new rally art concept so the rally art performance sub brand was revived this past may and is definitely something to be excited about and we have no other details that could be mm. cool yeah Think yeah for sure mitsubishi actually making something cool again <laughs> instead I, of I the like eclipse suv lane I know. What, when, when when did they stop making an Evo? Like, how many oh, years like has it been? 2010. Like it's been I know, a yeah. yeah. Why, I wonder why they it's walked away. It's been forever since it... Because well, those things are sick. Yeah, they're awesome. Maybe huh. they couldn't take the heat from Subaru. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> but, man, I'm actually excited to see what that ends up being. Because, like, that shot right there could totally be, like, a GR86 yeah. BRZ competitor. That would yep. be awesome. The 2022 Tokyo Auto Salon is scheduled for January 14th through the 16th. The Rivian R1S and R1TEVs see more delays. Vehicles that were 
to be optioned with the long range 400 plus mile max battery pack or explorer package have been delayed to 2023. The automaker will prioritize production of the R1T and R1S models fitted with the 135 kilowatt hour large battery pack and the adventure package. The long range max battery pack is a $10,000 option and the explorer package removes $5,500 from the price as it does not include as many niceties as the adventure package does. So they're kind of seems like trying to prioritize the smaller battery luxury Just more luxury optioned ones and so they're reaching out to all customers to see if they would rather switch so they could still take delivery in 2022 or if they would like to wait for their option wow interesting decision obviously Very it's probably production issues and things like that oh, and so they, they've got to pair back and um Very but it just stinks that people have to wait longer know. you know for something that they've already probably put a big deposit in on and oh and it's already been delayed a few times now very hmm. interesting to see how manufacturers are handling these delays and production things because like hey you could switch you could get one or you're gonna yeah there's wait. only so much they can do i suppose but yeah but yeah that's i don't know but i mean the videos of these things they're pretty cool and like the reviews from journalists and stuff they've been doing really well yeah like i know motor trend loved it I know Doug DeMiro, he loved it. He you know, it I awesome. haven't seen there enough of... Quirks and features. Yeah, I bet there's a ton, right? But I haven't seen enough of, does it actually work like a truck? You, you know to, what I mean? Well, like, you have to see the video. Did you yeah. watch Motor no, Trends I, I'm gonna videos? I'm going to have to watch it, it. yeah. Because they took it across the country off-road, yep. and so it's pretty cool. Off-road is cool, but like load it with a payload and tr towing a trailer oh, and I that bet. kind I of mean, stuff. It, I'm yeah. sure the trailer thing would be a piece of cake, but... For sure. Um, but, you know, because it, it does... I don't know. It's it's got like a Honda Ridgeline kind of vibe to it. You think so? Looking at this photo, um, I mean, I, I see where you're coming from. Yeah, it's it it doesn't have that tough look yeah. necessarily, right? And so you just wonder how to hold up um, people actually using it like a truck. Yeah, you're right. But how many people actually use their truck? You know, like, probably not. So that many, to I mean, be honest. they're just they're it's yeah. for when you have to move that couch. Eventually, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're cool. I can't wait to see one in person. Oh, agreed. I would love to ride in one. That'd be awesome. Now, Mercedes-Benz is unveiling their Vision EQXX EV. So this, we saw this teaser image of a couple months ago. Tomorrow, January 3rd, the Mercedes Vision EQXX electric concept car will be unveiled, featuring more than 620 miles of range, relatively light curb weight compared to other EVs, an extremely aerodynamic shape promises a view into the brand's EV future. And I think this thing could honestly be pretty cool. Definitely tune in to see what Mercedes has in store because this should be pretty impressive well of course once they reveal this we'll put all the details give you all the images yeah. next week man this thing looks awesome yes it does now with this being the first episode of 2022 we are going to list the vehicles that are no more keep in mind some of these are gone for good and others will most likely be returning in 2023 or just in the future they just don't have a 2022 model out so first up bmw 2 series convertible bmw m2 BMW i3, Dodge Durango SRT Hellcat, Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT and Trackhawk, Honda Clarity, oh no, Hyundai Ioniq Electric, the Hyundai Veloster, but not the Veloster N, Lotus Evora GT, Mazda CX-3, Mazda 6, McLaren Elva, <laughs> really? <laughs> Mercedes AMG A35, Mercedes AMG CLS 53, Mercedes AMG GT Coupe and Roadster, Nissan NV, Nissan NV 200, again, oh no, dang it, Polestar 1, hmm. Porsche Macan Turbo, Rolls Royce Dawn, Rolls Royce Wraith, Subaru WRX STI, Toyota Land Cruiser, Volvo V60 and V90, Volkswagen Passat, and last but not least, most of the Mercedes V8 models. Pretty crazy, huh? Moment of silence for some of those. I know. Some of them, <laughs> eh. Some of them, eh. That's fine. Make some room for some other production. But, like, 
the M2 is one of the ones that's also supposed to come back. They just haven't released the yeah. new version yet. I'll tell you that stop that photo that you used. That thing was beautiful. Oh, that, I yeah. saw that <laughs> yeah. and I was yeah. drooling. That's one of the best pictures of an M2 I think I've yeah. seen. That thing's awesome <laughs> with that blue sick. and those yeah. gold wheels. So cool. Well, with that, that is it for today's episode. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and check us out at TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter at Anthony C-I-F-A-L. And with that, you have an excellent rest of your week. Hey, thanks again for hanging out with us for a bit. We'll catch you next time. Peace out.